Hi, my name is Casey Tift. I'm a member at First Baptist Church here in Benson, Arizona. Um, today, it's my pleasure to uh, give to you a short devotional based on the, a book our pastor wrote. Um, it's called uh, Stepping Forward, a 39-day walk through Ephesians. Um, and their pages are broken up into days. I'm going to be uh, giving the devotional on day 20, which covers Ephesians verses four, uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And uh, the title of that section is The Reason for Unity in the Church. Um, so first I'll read the scripture, uh, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Okay, that was Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. Um, so, why is Paul giving uh, these reasons for unity in the church? Well, he wrote this particular letter to the church in Ephesus, and uh, he was encouraging the Christians there to, uh, to well, verse four, three, chapter 4, verse 3 says it all, uh, and in 1 as well. Ephesians 4, 1 says, I, Paul, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. That's the call of salvation from God. And he says, you should be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's uh, in Ephesians 4, 3. So he is urging them to have, to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So the Spirit has given us unity as a church and peace. He's urging them to maintain that despite the uh, the attacks from the world and evil influences. Um, and so he, then he follows up with these seven reasons in verses 4 through 6 that I read earlier. Um, I'd like to break these up into their reasons to maintain this unity. Uh, and in my mind, you can break them up into reasons where we share a common past, a common present, and a common future. Um, and these commonalities help us and encourage us and direct us to maintain unity. Um, first, the common past. Um, he mentions, uh, Paul mentions in verse 5, having one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Uh, we all, as Christians, have one faith. We believe Jesus Christ is God. He is our Savior. He's forgiven our sins. Um, he is our Lord. Lord meaning he has authority over us. Um, he created us. Um, and we've all shown that by being baptized in front of other people. So we're all committed to, to this. Um, and we've already done that as Christians. So we, we share this common commitment in our past. So that binds us together, gives us some basis for unity in the future and in the present. Um, we have all committed to serve the same God who is almighty and he's consistent and truthful. We all believe that. Um, in the scripture, in Numbers uh, chapter 23, verses 19, uh, it says, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. And so we hold that our one Lord, our one faith was to a God who's consistent and doesn't lie. So he would give us that consistency and commonality in our past. Um, let's see here. In Mike's book, he mentions, seventh reason for unity is that there is one God and Father. There should be a natural unity within the church because we all share one God and Father who is in us and over us. He is our Heavenly Father and we are His adopted children. We all pray to Him. We all worship Him. We all respect and revere Him. There are many of us, but we serve one God. So we have a strong connection in our past through one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God. In our present, that leads us to where we are now. Um, we were baptized and we believe these things. We're now part of a church body. Uh, in scripture, the church is referred to as Christ's body. He is referred to as the head. Um, now in the Greek, uh, the word body in these verses is the word soma. And it can mean a physical body, like a person's body or an animal's body. It could also mean a close group of people 
um, that share a lot of commonality. Um, it's interesting that the Bible uses a lot of direct analogies to a physical body to describe the church. Um, version, verses 15 and 16 in this same chapter, Ephesians 4, and also uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 go through pretty extensive analogy comparing the church to the literal body of a person with hands and feet and eyes and that we're all members of the same body uh, working together. Now, in my mind, a body, a physical body, implies a real integration between people and a closeness uh, like no other. You know, you think about all the cells in our bodies, they all sort of live on their own and do their own functions, but they would die if our body dies. Same with the church. You know, we all have different functions in the church, different talents, different other parts of the church we interact with, but our spiritual life is tied to the life of the church. And if the church died, which it, it won't, God promised it won't, but we would we would die too. I mean, our, our, we are tied to one another as a group of believers. We are the church. So we are very integrated and have a big responsibility to hold the church's interests at the same level as our own, if not higher. You know, the church's life is our life. And uh, this really implies a real, very tight dedication. Um, in this book, Mike says, First of all, there is one body. Each Christian is a part of, a member of, the body of Christ, which stretches throughout the world. This body has one head, Jesus. This means this body should function as one, in unity. Together we are one body, not many bodies. We are not many separate groups trying to force our way into one group. We are already one group, united in Christ. Um, so, the closeness of one spirit, one body, give us a very united present time. You know, we are acting as members of the church, as parts of the body of the church. Um, Paul mentions one spirit as well. Uh, so, we're members of one body as a social group, but inside of us, we all have the same spirit. We all have God's Holy Spirit placed in us as a helper when, accept, when we accepted Christ as our Savior. Uh, it should be helping us, and it is helping us to all have commonality. We have the same attitude. We should be united in having God's attitude about things. So that gives us the same attitude. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13 says, By one spirit we were all baptized into one body. So the spirit helps us become a body together. It, it supernaturally helps us. So it will help us achieve that unity of the spirit that Paul mentions in Ephesians 4, 3. Um, I'm trying to think here. Let's see. In Mike's book, he says, The Holy Spirit who abides in one Christian is the same as the Holy Spirit who abides in another. He has caused us to have one hope of our calling. So it's the same spirit. God is consistent. It's the same. He offers the same part of himself to each one of us and makes all of us an essential part of this body. So... Often at church, you know, I think about just things that occur, and I, I think, you know, how else could a bunch of amateur volunteers from many walks of life come together and serve in love and sanctify each other despite our sinful nature, get things done, uh, have a good time and grow? How could we all do that unless we were supernaturally, spiritually committed to be together? To me, that's a mystery, but it works. Finally, we got a common future, um, and to me, that's the hope that they mentioned. Uh, we have the same hope. We all have eternal life as brothers and sisters in God's family, loving God and one another in heaven. Um, if we're headed to the same place, but the same destiny, we really can only do that in love. Um, Colossians 1.27 says, to them, meaning the church body, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we all have the same hope to be glorified and have Christ in us. Uh, we have the same hope of eternal life mentioned elsewhere in the Bible. Uh, Titus 1 mentions that as well. So if we're going the same place, we all hope to be there together. 
sharing and being part of God's family, then it only makes sense that we do that in love, loving one another. Uh, and that really is the only way it works. And we have the Spirit to help us do that. So God's given us a lot and a lot of call towards unity. He's equipped us to, to be united. We have a lot of challenges to that, but we've been equipped to do it. So I hope this has all encouraged you. And uh, have a great day.